Hopefully my voices are still pretty good because it's been a while since I streamed this. 18th of February, 12.52 p.m. The Old Bailey Defendants Antichamber. Oh yeah, and then at the end, something happened. What, wait, what happened? Something happened at the end. I can't really remember what happened. What on earth just happened there? That's what I want to know because I can't remember. Mr. Naruto, I've managed to find out what happened. Mrs. Hato! I was told this was an advance of, of a smoke grenade. Oh yeah, the room filled with smoke. I remember that. A type of exploding device that releases smoke. A smoke grenade? It, it sounds like the sort of thing ninjas use. They're just making sure everything is safe now. I think the trial will start again before long. But who would have done something like that? The police managed to catch something who was tr catch someone who was trying to flee the courtroom, apparently. Flee the courtroom? Why? Well, it's a young girl of around 15, I hear. A young girl? Then could it be could it be that girl that he was talking about earlier? The other passenger that Mr. McGilda was talking about? I think so. My thoughts exactly. So he wasn't lying. Oh, what's become of Mr. McGilded actually? Wait, that's not me. What happened to Mr. McGilded actually? There have been so many things I need to ask him about, but he's not here. Mike's on, right? Yes, Mike is on. Okay. I think it was summoned by the prosecutor's antic chamber to answer questions, along with a young girl. Who is she, I wonder? And what was she even doing here at the trial? She was taking a huge risk, and for what possible benefit to herself? There's another matter that's troubling me. What's that? The 20 pence. Hmm? Oh, um... That's right, because they were... There was the thing where they paid like a certain amount of money, and it was all different. According to the coachman, Mr. Beppo... He took four passengers that night, a fare of five pence each. That comes to a total of 20 pence exactly. But now it seems we're, there were in fact five passengers, which means the figures don't seem to add up again. Uh, she's right. That is strange. Counsel for the defense, kindly proceed to the courtroom. The trial will recommence, recommence in five minutes. Oh, uh, thank you, officer. We'll go straight in straight away. Well, whoever she is, I imagine this young girl will be asked to take the stand and testify now. I really can't imagine what she's going to say, but it could di could alter the whole direction of the trial. Man, Finn's barking again. Perfect timing, because it's early in the stream, so that's great. We'll know soon enough, Mr. Sato. Yes! Alright. <laughs> He's so loud! 18th of February, 1pm, the Old Bailey Courtroom. Oh, that's the lady and the Mr. Irishman. Wait, she has a hat on too. But w was that the hat we saw? Because it looked like it was a top hat. So I don't think... No, she didn't do it. It's not her. There's the young girl next to McGilded. There's the... Yes, there's the young girl. Look. She must have been the one who caused the disturbance before. Well, after that rather eventful recess, the court will now resume the trial of Magnus McGilded. Now then, Lord Van Zeeks. My lord, I believe you have established the cause of the smoke which veiled proceedings earlier. It seems to have been an advancement of smoke of a smoke grenade of the sort typically employed by the army. Good gracious, the army! What a devil's name! It was an elaborate attempt by a young girl to cloak her escape from the public gallery, but she was caught. And now occupies the stand. Hmm. Your name, girl. Are you responsible for the smoke grenade which induced such pandemonium here in my courtroom? What is the meaning of this deplorable behavior? I feel like she's related to Holmes. I mean, Sholmes, not Holmes. Ahem, if I may, my lord. Yes, Mr. McGilded. I think perhaps I ought to explain here. Why is it that this wheel ass was here in the first place? Why is she tied to a board like that? It is all tied up with the events of the evening, so it is. Hmm. Very well, Mr. McGilded, give your testimony. You will explain to the court exactly how this young woman is involved in the case. Hmm, dot, dot, dot. Just what, what did happen that night? It's not like a defense lawyer needs that information or anything. Well, we're gonna get to it, just calm down. <laughs> Witness to testimony. I like how fancy it looks. On the night in question, I took the back seat in the omnibus and promptly nodded off. Then, bagur, a loud thud with a wee scream woke me up at a fast start. There was a fella collapsed on the floor at my feet, so I sat him up in the seat across from me. 
Then I turned to find out where the scream had come from, and bless my soul, what did I find? There was a child in there, all curled up in a ball, here, hiding her wee self away. So that explains why, if she was hiding, that means she didn't really pay, but how did she get on there in the first place? I remain somewhat baffled, I confess, but what did I gather in the next question? This young girl was indeed riding in the omnibus, is that correct? That's what he just said. Tis exactly as the defense counsel said. This last was the fifth passenger, my lord. Yeah. Don't doubt that. Very well. The defense may now cross-examine the witness. Are you ready, counsel? Yes, my lord! Or rather, no. I have no idea where to start. <laughs> Ellipsis. Alright, so... It's been a while, I don't really remember anything in the court record, but we'll figure it out. On the night in question, I took the back seat in the omnibus and promptly nodded off. Uh, let's see. We've got the autopsy. Um, thrice fried mason, stabbed in the abdomen with a knife while jo uh, journeying on an omnibus. I thought it said jousting on an omnibus. Uh, due to an inter uh, internal hemorrhaging resulting in trauma. There, there's the crime scene. Got it. Defendant's leather gloves. That makes sense. Uh, Patches inside. I gotta go in. Because I've got to see where they were hiding. Well, let's open the gate. Oh, wait. I, I already go through this. I already went through this. I remember that. I do want to see if there's anywhere they could be hiding. Like, if they could go under the seat anyway. The seat looks reasonably soft, but it's actually rather hard when you sit on it. And only just wide enough for two gentlemen to sit by side by side, really. Of course, an English gentlewoman would be dressed in such finery. It would be quite impossible for her to climb up into the roof deck, so she would have to be seated under here. A woman in a kimono would have the same problem. Women's clothes are very impractical, aren't they? Okay, but... There's a, there's a handle, so that... Yeah, this seat has a handle, it seems. Okay, so that's where they were hiding. That's good. We found that. Um, gotta make food. All right, have some good food. This is a storage compartment, but there's nothing in here. It's totally empty. Something doesn't seem right there, but I can't put my finger on what it is. Um, well, I can't really see. It, it looks. Uh... Oh, blood! <laughs> that, that's cool. Yeah. So there's no handle there. This is where they hid. Um, I don't think there's anything we can really gather from this. Other than the fact that there is a compartment here where they hid. Alright, that's fine with that. Fine with that. Um, I took the back seat in the omnibus and nodded off. Then, um, Begora, a loud thud and a wee scream woke me up from the fire start. There was a fella collapsed on the floor at my feet, so I set him up in the seat across from me. Uh, then I turned it to find where that scream had come from. And bless my soul, what did I find? There was a child in there, all curled up in a ball, hiding her wee self away. Let's, let's learn more about this. You say she was hiding herself? Aye, that's right. It was hard to see in the dim lamplight, but she was all curled up in a wee ball. Then her eyes met, well, my heart nearly stopped beating in my chest. Uh, you're really overreacting to this. Still and all, I pulled her out from under there, and sat her, sat her on the seat opposite so we could have a wee chin wag with her. The seat opposite? That's right, just next to the dead gentleman there, that's terrible. You sat this young girl next to a corpse, sir! Well, as I'm sure I mentioned, a gentleman in my position can be too often find himself in mortal danger. Wait, a gentleman in my position can all too often find himself in mortal danger. So, I needed to find out just who this urchin was, you see? Mm. And while I was in the middle of talking with her, with her I, <laughs> I heard another scream, a fellow's voice this time. Presumably that scream was Mr. First. Who is sitting on the roof deck seats? Right, you are again, I would say, sir. Looking down through the skylight, you must have seen this young girl and gentleman with a knife in his belly. In other words, the previous witness did not, in fact, see you at all, Mr. McGilded. What they believed to be yourself and the victim was, in fact, this girl and Mr. Mason. Aye, my lord. I was, as I, as I think everyone understands now, sat in the back of the carriage out of sight. But who did it? Hey, Slayton, those crazy snail. Uh, greetings from class, can't see long, wanna say, say hi. Uh, well, hello, crazy snail. Uh, a lot of people are in school right now, I'm going back next week. I hope you're, you're surviving in there, because, man, school sucks, but, hey, you'll be done soon. And then, that'll be great. 
It's certainly possible. The defendant is somewhat diminutive in stature, and readily confused, perhaps, with this young girl. After that, of course, with a scream from the gentleman over us, the driver released, realized something was wrong and pulled up the horses. Okay, but th that puts the blame on her, then. I do wonder, or I do wonder how you must be feeling, Mr. Naruto. Being the defendant's lawyer and yet finding myself as stunned and everyone else at his testimony? Let's just say it's trying. Well, sir, we certainly had precious little time to talk to Mr. McGilded before the trial. But we mustn't be dis dispirited. We must try and learn all the facts we can. <sighs> when we arrived in London this morning, I didn't see my day planning out like this. Panning out like this, not planning. Mr. Naruto, no grumbling even in your head! Uh, how did you know? We didn't get anything from that. We have four lives, so... Okay, great, that's cool. I just noticed that. Uh, I took the vaccine, the omnibus promptly nodded off. Um... What do we have here? We don't... Before we got the video on the omnibus... Uh, it's visible. We just... Okay, we just need more information. Let's just press everything. Because we need more. And when you first got on the omnibus, were there any other passengers nearby on board? On uh, nearby? I can't speak. There were not. The cabin was empty, and there was no one on the roof deck either. You were the first passenger, as it were. I see. Hi, and that's why I took the back side, as I did. This is the most comfortable, so it is. Could you explain exactly what you mean by the back seat? By all means, it's how you already described it earlier. I'm talking about the seat opposite the one, but the poor gentleman who stabbed was sitting in. Like I said, it's the most comfortable, and where I feel at most at ease. And of course, I enjoy gazing through the skylight from time to time as well. Ellipsis. Oh, he's being awfully quiet. He knows something. Uh, a thud on Weezkin woke up with the first start. Give me this. A loud thud, you say? And a scream? Hey, oh, yeah, that's right. How can I explain it? It was like the sound of someone falling to the ground. That sort of noise. Wait, well, how did he... He heard a thud, but he was in the... He was, So he was the first one in the car. How did he... So you think it was the son of Mr. Mason falling to the floor, having been stabbed? Well, now, you'll remember I was asleep. Okay, he was asleep, okay. So I wouldn't like to say. And when the sound woke me and I opened my eyes, there wasn't a soul to be seen in the carriage, but there fell on the floor. Hmm, I didn't see anyone. But at the same moment, you did hear a scream. Oh, from the seats above, on the roof deck, I presume? Not above me, no, my lord. It was from inside the cabin. But I wasn't altogether thinking about the scream. No, I was too stunned by the desperate sight before my eyes. Yeah, you would be. Uh, there's a fella collapsed on the floor at my feet. Sat him up. Did you give me more information? Uh, what did I find? Curl up in a ball. Uh, we. Uh... Hmm. A fella collapsed on the floor at my feet. Give me more information. You sat him up? The victim, you mean? This might give me something. That I did in the seat across from me, as I said. I could plainly see the poor devil was already gone. And you wouldn't have left a, leave a dead man lying on the floor now, would ya? Tis common courtesy, so it, Well... I find that a little hard to believe. Me too, honestly. Oh, Lord Van Zeeks, now why would that be? You wake to find a man lying dead at your feet in a carriage. Any normal person would hail the cabin. The cabman. Any upstanding member of London society, that is. Well, now, as you know, I'm in some, some sort of a... Or I'm in some sort of a special line of business. But business of lending money at an ex exorbitant rate of interest? Unfortunately, my lord, not everyone is thankful for the help I offered him, and some would even see me dead. So I do try, where it's all possible, to avoid getting myself in a tangle with trouble. Are you suggesting you were going to leave the man there? Heaven's alive, no, I was I was always intended to report it, so I was. Only I had a mind to find out whys and wherefores first. The whys and wherefores? Right you are, there were some details I wanted to understand before anyone else got to meddling. That wee scream I heard, for example. Wouldn't your good self do the same? Hmm, yeah, the scream he says he heard at the same time as the thud of the victim collapsing. Okay, so if he was asleep, here, here's the thing, if he was asleep and she was in the, she was under the, the thing, the cabin, or the, the seat, there was no way she could have gotten out, so, 
her alibi seems rock solid if he's telling the truth. If he put... Well, no. Okay, so I don't think she did it, unless he's lying. Um, what did I find? Uh, there was a child killed up in a ball, hiding a resell away. Uh, okay, so this is the, the knife. What is this? The dead is love. Um, I don't think that'll help us at all. No, that's not gonna help us. Here's the knife. Um... The largest knife that was found lies in the victim's abdomen. It's quality and fancy weapons, which is quite valuable. The Omnibus, um... Alright, let's press him. We, I, I need all the information I can get. I'm afraid I don't understand. I'm sure you told the court that there was no one else in the carriage except for yourself and the victim. So I did, sir, so I did, as far as I could see, that is. What do you mean by that? Well, now it is a queer thing. The wee scream I heard as I woke up. It came from, if you'll excuse the vulgar expression, under me backside. Good gracious! Under your backside? And when I lifted the seat on which I had been sitting, I found there was a wee cubby hole there for storage. Mr. Narada, we can examine the omnibus ourselves, remember? Yes, of course. The whole bus was submitted as evidence. This would be a very good time to have a thorough look around inside. And that's when I found her. Alright, so we just need to press a bunch. I you have heard enough. The events, as explained, are clear in my mind. However, at least one conundrum remains. Who is the girl? Her name is Gina Lestrade, my lord. She's a chancer. Earns her crust among large crowds, relieving people at her purses. Per purse? Relieving pi- Rel You're a, a thief. What's commonly called a pickpocket. What? This girl here? A petty thief? Hmm. Order, order. Is this true, Miss Lestrade? 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 Miss Lestrade, you will answer the question. Oh my god. <laughs> How dare you? What is the meaning of this? Oh, the girl. She's gone. Open your eyes. I know they here. <laughs> Okay, that's the voice for her. Good gracious, how? What was the point in that little sidestep? I know you what I know what you lot were thinking, but I'm all the same. Just do a little di dip dipper, not diaper, dipper, you'll say, slipped up and got caught in the job. She herself backed into a corner, she knifed the gent. Go on, that's what that, that's what's in your head, isn't it? No, not at all. This is court of law. We're here to determine the truth, not cast Oh, it's a splatoon. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, look at the coin roll. I try. I I've been trying. I, I've I've attempted that. That's difficult to do. That's pretty insane. That's fancy. Look, knives are for cowards. The only thing you use are weapons like that. And these are these little fingers. I'm a professional, all right. Maybe not on your eyes, but I've got pride in what I do. I like it. Let me guess. You don't count smoke guns among weapons for thugs. Oh, this, yeah, this was in the bag I lived with the other day. Where, wait, it, this was in the bag I, that's Holmes's, I, I knew it. Sholmes, sorry, not Holmes. Who is Holmes? I meant Sholmes. Uh, down with the, the, keep the four wheel drugs. It's nice, isn't it? I like the pink best. Uh, do, do not wave the thing in my direction again. Time for another drink. <laughs> so, you admit that you were riding the omnibus on the night in question. It is all right, lass. You can tell him the truth now. All right, yeah, just like the Irishman said. The court accepts this girl, Miss Gina Lestrade, as a valid and significant witness in the case. Accordingly, young lady, you will, we will now hear your testimony, if you please. You're gonna lie. I guarantee you're gonna lie. You will tell the court exactly what happened in the omnibus on the night in question. All right, if I have to. Okay. Witness this the money. What the girls are. So I snuck inside the carriage before they hooked up the horses just like as always. 
But it was alright. It was all right, all waste of time. Not in the show when we troubles that night. I tell you, I can't see a blind thing in that hiding place. This bitch in there. <laughs> He's barking again. He never stops. He literally never stops. Ever. He will. He's ridiculous. I don't even know what he's barking at. I have no idea. I have no idea. Oh wait, yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> then after a while, I hear this loud bang, and it jumped in my skin. I did, and the screams just came out. It's because of this old. It's because that old swell found me. And I did help. This is so difficult to read in an accent. Like, what if I just don't even do an accent? It, it, then it doesn't have the right impact. Yes, he let you go. I fail to understand why you would let the street urchin go, Mr. McGilden. Oh, to simplicity myself, my lord. You see, she couldn't possibly have killed the other passenger. I knew that for a fact. How? It's because she, he was sitting on the thing, you fool. What? I'm sure I said before, sir. You were sitting on top of the thing. And, and she couldn't get out. I was sitting on top of the place where she was hiding herself. I think a demonstration is called for. <laughs> well, no, it's not. It is not... No! What? There's no reason! We don't need a demonstration for this! This is where I sat all night. Or that night, and the cubbyhole of which you have spoken is underneath the seat, I presume. Yep, there it is. Hmm, yes, it does appear large enough to accommodate some, some of the girl's stature. There should at least be two different things, then. Why is there no... This doesn't have anything to do with the case, but why is... If there's... A cubby hole on one end, why is there a cubby hole on the other end? Like you're sitting down in the bus, right? And you're just sitting there and you put you put your baggage underneath first and then you sit down and then when you get to your stop you stand up, you lift your seat and you get your stuff. If you have to put it in there, then you would have to get up from the other seat, say, Oh, excuse me, sir, can you wake up real quick? I g I gotta get my package and then they're like oh, you're and then they gotta stand up and then you get your stuff. That's just annoying. Why isn't whatever. But of course, the wee lass was snuck in there because I parked myself on the seat for the duration. Oh! So you see, that's why I let the lass bolt it. Oh, or I let him bolt, not bolt it. I uh, knew that if the police found her there, they'd automatically assure she'd done it. But I couldn't live with myself if the young life was ruined when all the time I knew she was innocent. Even though you must have realized your action would result in your own innocence being called into question. Oh! You, you're right! Not at all, my lord! Not at all! Oh. I knew in my own heart I was innocent. So I thought, it is worth taking a punt to my own good name for the sake of this less fortunate lass. My goodness! What a very gentleman! My lord! This, this is a fine example of a man could have possibly be guilty for such a heinous crime like this. I'm ashamed of myself for ever doubting you, sir. Well, they are really gullible. I don't agree with this. Like, I mean, this is good for us, but I don't agree with it. With calm, cognitive reasoning, one will arrive clearly in the truth of the everyday time. I don't know what I just read, but it wasn't that. I don't agree. I do agree, but you shouldn't... You know, Don't be this gullible. That's bad for me, because now Zeke's gonna say something. He'll be like... But actually, he's rich and he doesn't care about you. And they'll be like, oh, you're right! Say it's alive! All six members of the jury come to and the leading of the verdict of not guilty? And the courtroom's going crazy. Mr. Naruto, this, well, must mean. Must mean what? We, we were victor. No, we're not victor. Don't say that. This is. No. It's been 30 minutes. It, we get, no. We've won? Are you sure? See, here he comes. <laughs> Whoa! Excuse me. If, <laughs> don't do, do, never do that again with your legs, sir. If the sight of my iron heel Wellington offends, pray do forgive the discourtesy. Please take your foot down. This really is a consummate, a consummate example. Of the one a monumental flaw in the British judicial practices. Judicial. Where evidence and reasoning should be paramount, emotion rules the day. Emotion? The witness's latest statement gives us clear insight into his true nature. What do you mean, his true nature? 
Do you really think Scotland's Yard would have made such a glaring omission? After the incident, the omnibus was comprehensively searched by the officers of the police. What did you find in there? Obviously, the interior of this cubby hole, as the witness put it, was included in the investigation. <coughs> the compartment under the pro the the posterior seat was full of the coachman's belongings. It is noted in black and white here in the police report. I was thinking that. I was I was actually thinking, it's 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 pretty good that no one put their belongings in there. Good Lord. The evidence has been tampered with. In order to corroborate Mr. McGillard's story, someone has unlawfully removed everything from under the seat. Oh, what? Yeah. I knew there was going to be something. Order, order! How could such a devious contravance possibly have been affected, Council? Naturally, we must acknowledge the deficits he has such long words of the contra- Oh my god, of allowing this to have happened. However, I assure you, when the omnibus was wheeled into the courtroom this morning, the compartment under the seat was not empty. Well, my Nipponese friend- Hmm? Me? When the carriage was submitted as evidence, Doubtless you examined it in fine detail, as would any self-respecting practitioner of the law. Pray, what did you find the condition under the sea? I didn't look. I didn't even... When I searched it first, I didn't even look in there. I didn't even look. I, di I, I, I didn't look. I'm an idiot. I should have looked. Or to be sure the young gentleman will be able to clear this up in a jiffy. Sorry? Go ahead, you tell the course now, fella. How is this an all elaborate excuse but a desperate Lord Van Zeeks? I didn't check the compartment. I forgot. I didn't know there was a compartment. I didn't even think about it. Well, Council, do you have something to say on this matter? Yeah, I do, actually. Safe. That's what I have to say. Let's use slot two. How many slots are there? Yeah, let's use slot two. Why not? How am I supposed to answer it? What can I say about the state of that little compartment under the seat in the omnibus? I did. I, <laughs> I didn't look. I'm gonna be. I didn't look. Sorry, I'm a failure. I didn't look. Why didn't I examine the omnibus more thoroughly? <laughs> Perhaps I credited you with too much intelligence. It seems, my lord, that this eastern in <laughs> initiate is as unreliable as wine from the barrel. I'm sorry. Mr. Narodo! <laughs> well, now, it would seem the argument is moot. I am back, made the food. I hope it was good food. Or I hope if you're eating it, that it is good food now. I'm such an idiot. I didn't check the compartment under the seat. And the truth of the matter there is for you to see after all. That there cubby hole under the seat is empty as the devil's heart, so it is. No, I don't doubt that it was full. I do not doubt that it was full, but I'm an idiot and I didn't check and I can't go back to check. Why? Why do I feel like something's not right here? I'll tell you why. It's because it was full. I should like the jury to weigh in on this matter, I think. The compartment is designed to house equipment used to maintain the smooth running of the carriage. The did I just do something? I feel like I just did something. Like, I, I clicked the button on my headphones and I feel like there's music playing right now. And I don't think there is. I think we're good. Okay. The guild's rules state the army must be properly and fully equipped for all times, so it certainly wouldn't have been empty on the night in question. Bippo isn't that irresponsible. The money lending freelancer and the big presses are lying. See what I mean? They're this gullible. They're so gullible that even if you say one little thing. Oh, I can't believe I was nearly take it in. The stinking wretch are always stinkers. Nothing but cowards, a lot of them. I said exactly that. I said exactly that. Wh what? It's a trick. Of course it's a trick. I said exactly that. They're going to be like, oh, he's rich. Quite so. I must concur here. Uh, and I don't see him again. 
With calm, calculated reasoning, one arrives clearly at the truth every time. Yeah, but every time a different truth, it seems. Bow. My lord, I humbly exhibit the scales of justice. Clearly, a verdict of not guilty at this time would be wholly inappropriate. Hey. I... I was right. I... I didn't doubt that. I... I was thinking the same thing. It really would be beneficial if it was, but... Hey, we don't know the real culprit yet. Usually in court, you don't find the real culprit, but in Ace Attorney, you always find him. We didn't find him yet. Or her. Uh, this man is a vampire. I... I... It... Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he was like... The sun! <clears throat> you know? I wouldn't doubt that. Like, if that happened at the end of the game... But before we proceed any further, there is a matter of outstanding cross-examination. Come on, I'm ready for it. I'll get it now. Counsel for the defense, begin your questioning of the witnesses, please. Look, we just want to find the truth. I just want to find the truth. That's all I want. Yes, my lord? What just happened? The whole balance of the trial just shifted almost beyond recognition. The Reaper of the Bailey is at work, it would seem. Ellipsis. I like to imagine every time he says that, he goes dot, 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 or he just says ellipsis times two. What well, the girl saw. So I snuck inside the carriage before they looked up the horses, just like always. Oh yeah, we already went through this, I remember that. Why do I waste of time? Got stuff and going in trouble last night. Not in the show. I tell you, I can't see a blind thing in that hiding place. There's a pitch in there. Can't see a thing, okay. After a while, it is loud bang, and I dropped out my skin. I did, and a scream just came out. What was the. Okay, was it. So it was probably him, right? When you say a loud bang, do you mean the noise from someone falling to the floor? We've got a look. Could have been, I suppose. I don't remember so well. Point is, made me jump. And you let out a scream involuntarily. That's right. And then I felt the cushion over me, at my head get lighter all of a sudden. Presumably when the defendant got up in order to help the victim, yes? No. <laughs> or not. It could equally have been the moment the accused stood in order to stab the victim, could it not? He's got a point, though. He's got a point. I can't deny that. Well, girl, did you see what happened in this crucial moment? Yeah, I saw it. What? Pushed up the cushion and I, uh, and uh, I get, oh, I pushed up the cushion and added a quick butcher's knife. What, wait, and a quick butcher's knife. What, I had the, wait, what, I pushed up the cushion and had a quick butcher's had a quick butcher's while I had the chance, didn't I? The Irishman was sitting up the block and had fallen on the floor in the opposite seat. That matches Mr. McGill's account, of course. But then. The fella suddenly turned around and looks right at me. Stuck back down again, which is toward eight by then. Should have never have risked looking. Okay. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Um that old swell found me. Um I did he did help me get away mind. Okay. Press you. I wanna know what I wanna know more about it. And when Mr. McGill discovered you, he pulled you out from your hiding place. I was scared stiff I was, he dragged me out and sat me down in the seat on all right. Next to the victim, Mr. Mason. Yeah, the bloke had a knife in his gut. He was uh, still bleeding. Give me the court record. Okay. That's uh, that's okay. And the carriage lurked a bit and ended up falling onto me. <sighs> that was awful. Wait, he fell onto. Oh, that's disgusting. Both mean man's got covered in blood and made me sick as a dog. Both both her hands covered in blood. That must be what the rooftop passengers saw. And after that, I believe you talked with Mr. McGilded for a while, is that correct? He asked me some stuff. Wanted to know my name and what I was up to and that. Then I heard something from above. Something scream or someone screamed. Yes, Mr. First on the top roof deck, one would presume. Lied no I didn't want no one to see my face, so I didn't look up. And then the arses were drawn up smart as an air Irishman says to me. Get back under the seat, I'll see that you can get away later. Hmm. Okay. All six members of the jury had decided the defendant was innocent. For one brief shining moment, yes. It's clear that they were still very unsure. If we could just find some conclusive piece of evidence among this new testimony, I'm sure we would cl clinch the verdict we want. 
Yeah, I think you're right. And I have this niggling feeling something's bothering me. But I just can't quite put my finger on it. Uh, I signed to the carriage before they they hooked they hooked up. I thought it said looked. No, they hooked up the horses. Just like always. Um, nothing to show. I got nothing to show for me troubles that night. Hold it! You sure? Because if 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 the compartment was a waste of time, why is that? Well, most nice when we own the in in the guard permit at least. I, this is so difficult to read. What? Most nice when we own the guard permit at least at our time. I beg your pardon. Did you say guard permit? Guard permit. Oh yeah. Well, that's what me kind call it. You say the omnibus, I suppose. The point is, any normal run, the carriage ain't no good with no one in it for a while. And that's when you come out of your hiding place and get away. That's it. Only that night. This cove was sat on me in the sweat of the start. The seat of the start. And he didn't even budge the whole day, the whole way. It did he not when he inched totally stuck. Ah, oh, this is hard to read. I can't even comprehend it, honestly. Do you mean to tell us that you were present in the carriage for the duration? You were under the seat the entire time while the events unfolded in the enclosed cabin. Yeah, right, mister. To be sure, to be sure, I was as shocked as anyone. You didn't expect to lift the cushion you've been sat on and find a child now, do you? Nope. So this Miss Lestrade couldn't possibly be the culprit then. No, but he could be. I don't want to believe that, though. Uh, pitch black. Did I, I? I looked at this one, didn't I? Let's do it again. So you couldn't see into the cabin at all. Not a shot. Most days, push the cushion up with me head and look at the crack. Uh, then I could have. Uh, then I could have a butcher's. Then I can have a butcher's at who I'm going to fiddle. Okay, I can have an idea of who I'm gonna get. I thought you were a pickpocket, not a butcher. I mean, I can have a look. The seat under... The seat I get under... It, the, what, screw this. The seat... The... I... I couldn't see. Most of the time, the passengers plant themselves opposite. But for some reason, that night, this here Irishman spent the whole journey right over my head. And for that reason, you weren't able to push the cushion to peek out, I suppose. Truth is... I'm not too happy in small dark places. Well, no. Feels too much. Well, now. Hey. No, oh, can you get pursue him? Pursue him. Pers Excuse me. Excuse me. Something wrong, Mr. Begilded. What did you even say that I pressed? I was so. I was like, oh, he said a thing. What am I doing? I'm so. What is happening right now? Am I can. I'm using an. Uh, I'm using a PlayStation controller, so all my buttons are messed up. So X is not actually X. Um, I'm not too happy in small other places. Uh, feels too much like being thrown in the clink. Weird. I do apologize. Was there something the matter, Council? I'm just wondering if Mr. Lestrade's last comment made something occur with you, perhaps. You seem to be thinking something to yourself. Oh, no, no. It is not an important. I just feel bad for the poor lass is all. I remember feeling desperate myself as a young lad, shut up in the dark. Just terrifying, so it was. <sighs> the truth is, about this guy, is that, like, I honestly don't trust him. Like, I... It's so difficult to trust a rich Irishman. It's so difficult. Like, I... I don't... Usually, you can be like, okay, there's no way he could do it. I'm so suspicious of this guy. <laughs> There's, he's not. It's his personality just making it seem like yes, I did it. But, but oh no, I, I couldn't have done it because I I give money to the poor. I did this young this young lass. I let her go. Oh, it's like I can't tell. You're so difficult to read. I see. Yes, I'm sure we can all sympathize. I'm still I'm still scared of the dark now. Coward? What? <laughs> I'm just joking. I I don't know about yourself, but I find the darkness seems to make everything you hear seem that much louder as well. I guess so. If you, because you're not, you can't see anything. Yeah. I suppose it does. Maybe. Miss Lestrade. 
Did you hear something that night? Anything? An unusual noise, perhaps? Nah, not really. All I could hear was the Irishman snoring. But jabers, there's the, there's not in the whole world of me the fables. What? There's no need to tell the whole world of me fables. Fables, you little scamp. What a pity. If only Miss Lestrade had heard something, it might have given us a vital new clue. Yeah. What should we make of that lay, lay statement about it? It's profoundly important. Put it in the testimony, please. My lord, I believe the statement just made by the witness is profoundly important. Profoundly important? But all she said was that she had nothing. She heard nothing. I don't care. Put it in the witness testimony, please. Yep, which is the profoundly important part. Point. I'm almost sure of it. Hmm. I'm almost sure I don't understand the inner workings of your Eastern Mind Council, nevertheless. Miss Gina Lestrade, you will supplement your formal testimony by repeating that last statement, please. What? Supplement? What are you on about? Oh, don't give me all your fancy talk. I know what you're trying to do. Well, you won't work on me. That's right. Insult the judge. Always a good move. Um... All I could hear was snoring. I didn't mean to do that, but yeah. Yeah. So you were starting to hear what was happening the entire time, since the moment you hid yourself. Wait a minute. Never mind. Not exactly, no. Sorry. Well, there was no one in the cabin to start with. I could only push the cushion up and have a butcher's to see what was what. But then when I saw this swell getting on, I got me a dawn down and he didn't notice me. Mr. McGill had sat on the seat under which you were hiding, correct? You already said this one. Um, yeah, would, would you Adam and Eve it, eh? What a mug! <laughs> Excuse me! <laughs> Let me ask you something, Mr. McGill did. Oh, and what would that be, fella? Do you have something to say about that last statement? No, not really. I'm altogether happy with what's been said. Kind of yitty ass and still and all. That, that made me kind of flinch. Here, have yourself a dip. Oh. Does he think I was asking after his general well-being? I was loud banging to a jump on my skin, and then a scream came out. Um, what did you add? This is what you added, right? Um, yeah, this is what you added, right? Uh, straining my ears to work out what was going on, but all I could hear was snoring. That doesn't help. That doesn't help at all. That doesn't help me whatsoever. I need more. I need something else. Unless it does. This. When you say loud bang, um, could have been, I suppose. I don't remember. Point is, maybe jump. This, you know, involuntarily. That's right. Fell unconscious. Uh, got up to help the victim. No. Um, uh, I don't know. You saw it. I pushed up a cushion. I was going to sit. Uh, opposite. I uh, looks right at me, swing again, too late, never risk anything, blah 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 blah. <laughs> so, I... All I could hear was snoring. Does the. I don't. Okay, wait, I have a, I have a, I have a hypothesis, but, um, snug at the carriage, um, all I could hear was snoring, I heard this loud bang, nearly jumped out of my skin, I did, and the scream just came out, um, because of that, he found you. No, 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 because, hang on, let me save. She, she didn't hear snoring. She couldn't have heard just snoring because, did, was he already, because he wouldn't have been asleep, right? He, he wouldn't have fell back asleep. Here, um, 
blood stain on the right glove. There has to be something. All I could hear was snoring. No. It's not true. What? The, no, what am I trying to prove here? Because you... No, uh, uh, whatever. Just go through the whole thing. I don't care. I don't know. <laughs> All the... Uh, God. I'm stuck again. Okay, a new piece of evidence. No, it's it's related to something. Something's bothering you. Yeah, something's bothering me too. I don't know what to present. Got inside the carriage. Can we present people? We can't present people. Okay. Hold it. Just give me anything, please. Give me anything. You're already in the omnibus before it even set off and it's run. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what's the point of spending a joy to make a few bob, eh? That's the dumb idea, ain't it? Which wasn't mean there's no point of spending money to make money. It actually makes sense. Well, yeah. Um, this girl's a petty thief, kindly remain for entertaining her tenants. Well, that does clear up a little bit of mystery in the bears and all. For paying passengers with five pence, making a twenty each, the command died. One little uh, scrape of scrape of guys ready hiding for free. The red conqueror driver always goes to some grub before his last run, see? So that's when I slip into the carriage, get myself riding under the seat. Uh, nice and easy, right? But your hiding place is a storage compartment. Full of equipment for the coach, no? Yeah, there's brushes and buckets and whatnot in there, sure. I always chuck that holler out in the cram it in a corner somewhere. No one ever seems to bother it much. And yet, according to the report filed with the police officer who first arrived on the scene, the compartment is full of such uh, uh, I don't know nothing about that. Like I said, I moved and all that stuff so I could I could ride under I I could hide under hide under the seat. That's what I can tell you. Uh, we reach the end of a line of inquiry. Continue. Oh my God, I don't know. Uh, wait, nothing to show for your troubles. Nothing, nothing in that hiding place. It was strained in my ears to work out what was going on, but all I could hear was snoring. No, I don't stop pressing. There's nothing to press. There's nothing to press. There's nothing to press. Just go. I, I mispressed. <laughs> mispressed. All I could do was listen. I was gonna jump out there as soon as I heard him leave. See? Um, but would he not likely? Even though we stopped here and there, I never heard the door open. As at the state put list to, uh, to him driving, driving his pigs to market, snoring like old dogs. Are there any conclusions we can draw from that, I wonder? It doesn't add up. There we go, that's what I'm missing. I accidentally pressed him, okay. Miss Lestrade, what, what, you've ju what you have just told the court is clearly at odds with the facts. Yeah, because he set him up, right? Because he, he set up the body... And, because he wouldn't be asleep. Absolutely. It seems my learned Nipponese friend is not as dull-witted as I feared. So Van Zeeks realized it too. I realized it too, but I didn't know that I, because I accidentally pressed him. Because I was like, oh, didn't you see something? Because he was like, oh. Council. I must insist that you blow your bolster any your claim with evidence or some compass of party's name at the very least. Yes, my lord. I expect you to demonstrate this alleged contradiction to the court. Okay. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me one minute. One minute. Because he said he was sleeping. The reason is because he was sleeping, but I don't know if I can prove that with evidence. How couldn't miss Lestrade while she was hiding in the omnibus that night? She heard nothing but the sound of Mr. McGill's snoring, but think, Ryanosuke, think! Think! Wait! Think, Ryanosuke! Think! What will you have in 500 years? <sighs> There's something else she should have heard. She should have heard... Oh, shoot! Shoot! Let's figure this out. You should have heard, um... The man dying. The man dying, right? I'm going to elaborate on a particular sound that Mr. Shad could not have failed to hear in the night in question. Sound very clearly explained by the presence of the following. Shoot. You 
how old is she? She's 17, okay. 21, okay. I don't know why I wanted to know her age. <laughs> I just saw the age, I was curious. That sounds terrible. Okay. Should you have heard him dying? I swear you should have heard him dying. But, like, I don't know. Screw Take it. That. I got it. Thrice tried Mason. Yes, my lord. The sound that Miss Lestrade cannot have failed to hear is that of the victim, Mr. Mason, boarding the omnibus. That too. Order, order, explain your reasoning, counsel. Miss Lestrade. <laughs> I swear, every time I play these games, I'm like, this has to be it! And then I was like, yeah, that is it! Because of the thing that I was not thinking! Miss Lestrade, let me, allow me to confirm something. You claimed earlier that you were the first person on the board of the Omnibus, is that correct? Yeah, of course it was. I got on while the driver was in the prob, didn't I? And the next person to board the Omnibus was Mr. McGilded. That it was, not a soul in the cabin when I climbed aboard. At least, not in plain sight. So you were, to all interests and purposes, alone in the enclosed cabin at the omnibus at the time. Uh, did I not just say as much? I wasn't traveling with anyone else, if that's what you mean. Yes, I'm get on, remember? Through the crack under the seat cushion. He was on his own, for sure. And from what we heard, the carriage made a, a number of stops after that on its onward journey. During which time did you not hear the door opening or closing at all? Nah, I never heard it. That's exactly what I was listening for, wasn't I? Waiting for the swell to leave. In which case, when and how did the victim end up in the carriage? Oh. We know that the victim collapsed inside the enclosed cabin of the omnibus. Therefore, Miss Lestrade's statement about what she did or not here is at odds with the fact. Oi. So, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, on the right track, but the track is, like, very... Slippery and I'm I fell off the track. I'm, I'm like on the track, but like half on the track <laughs> I'm on the track, but like going backwards on the track This petty thief statement was clearly flawed Lord Van Zooks. Yes, he knew He knew all too well that there was an inconsistency in Miss Lestrade's statement <laughs> It would seem words of thanks are in order for my learned friend What are you talking about? You have demonstrated matters impeccably. This witness and her colorful statements are entirely unreliable. Her words are convenient untruths, nothing more. Hmm. He's dead right? How could the victim possibly not have bored the omnibus? That makes no sense whatsoever. And this girl is a pickpocket. Let's not forget that. Oh? I would, hey, honestly, look, I, 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 I don't, <laughs> I don't know anymore. Honestly, I don't know if they're going to pull a 180 and be like, yeah, he actually did do it. Because I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. Either it's her, maybe she killed, maybe he killed himself. I don't think he killed himself. He couldn't have killed himself. Right? Because he, no, I don't know why I'm thinking it's a suicide because it's, I don't know. I really don't know. I didn't want to judge the dear little mite just because she had a rather naughty ways, but I must say... I can't abide lying. And neither can I. M Mr. Foreman! I didn't want to judge the girl just because she has some less than subrarious ways, but I must say I cannot abide liars. I'm losing? I'm yeah, we are losing. I like honestly I don't know I would be such a terrible defense attorney because I'd be like oh you know what he's got a point <laughs> I've got to trust my client Blah. Mr. Naruto that's five jury members leading courts guilty yeah it happened before it didn't stop it hey we were all at not guilty and then he's like said something and they're like oh yeah. so like it's just going back and this is a volleyball game this is a volleyball in the courtroom well, your consideration for others is refreshing, my Nipponese friend. 
to the considerable troubles have spared me. Yes, very refreshing. You're gonna be drunk by the time this is over. Girl, what are you playing at? Have you forgotten who you're working for, you girls? Like Eastern Admin. I don't remember it. Oh, uh, stop licking the knife. I hate this guy. He's so weird. Like, what? What's the point? You don't need to do this. This this carnage. It's perfect. Uh, Jira number two is the only one left. There's no the way this is going. I know. If we can't, why are we? Are we whispering? Are we speaking through brain waves? If we can't find some way to convince everyone of Mr. McGill's innocence, the judge will rule and will have lost. I very much wanted to believe the words of one of Lennox was respect the gentleman. But those of us in service know we must accept hard truths. Hold it! Yes, the witness's last statement seems to have re revealed a critical inconsistency Christency in her story. However, if we consider the possibility that her statement is in fact the truth, it may shed an entirely new light on this whole case. What are you saying? Counsel! I'm sorry, sir. Whatever do you mean? Oh, gosh. I will not tolerate your attempt to prolong my adjective. Explain yourself at once. When the accused boarded the omnibus on the night in question, the victim was nowhere to be seen. Subsequently, the carriage door was not heard opening a single time, as testified by the witness in the stand. And yet the victim's body was found inside the carriage. If this petty thief's words are to be believed, how do you explain the victim's miraculous appearance inside the cabin of the omnibus? I don't know. I think I know. I don't know anything. There's only one way to explain how the victim came to be inside the carriage. Okay, so... <sighs> Give me the bus. bus. Time, to, time to save? Can I save right now? Oh, you're right, I can save. I don't know why I thought I couldn't. Well, there we go. <clears throat> okay. Sorry for that cough. I should have muted... Yeah, whatever. Alright, so there is an entrance... The uh, unless you can get in, there's no Phoenix right. Oh. There is no other entrance. The only here are the possibilities I can think of. Either so he didn't come through the door, right? He so There's a latch, so you can get in through the... Because I can see that little latch right there. You can see that. There is a... W but how, why would he go in through the ceiling? What? There, there's no... He, okay, he wasn't put there after he died, because that's stupid. Why would he be put there? No... He wasn't there already. He, there's another entrance. There's the, the ceiling. And even if he was killed, he wasn't put there through the door. He was put there through the ceiling. That's my reason. If the door wasn't opened once, then the only explanation is that the victim entered the enclosed cabin some other way. Oh my god. What? Look, tell me how then. I wondered what new fantasy... What do you mean? My blind panic. I looked at the omnibus. The omnibus here is all to see. Yes, I know. Can you please show me? Only one side of the enclosed cabin is furnished with a door. I know, I'm not even doing an accent right now because I'm mad. The other has windows, fixed windows, which cannot possibly be open. In short, there is no entrance to the cabin other than that. You're an idiot. You're a moron. That's what you are. But there could be. There's one possibility you haven't considered, you idiot. You call yourself a prosecutor? You're like, the, your death itself? Yeah? Are you? Okay. Okay. Well, you, how, why, you can't look up. You've got no neck. I don't know what I'm saying, man. One way inside that isn't the door. Another opening, the use of which allowed the victim to appear inside the enclosed cabin. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, where would that be? Okay, tell me. I'll t I mean, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> you don't tell me, because I can tell you. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna buzz in which in incident accord, accord. Okay, I'll tell you. He came in through this, either he's in the ceiling or he's from the door and there's no seat. I think it will be this seat, but you know what? Screw you, it's the window. Screw you. That's right, music stopped, we got it. The answer's obvious. You can only be in the skylight. That's right. I see the skylight. Yeah, you... And now he's gonna be like, watch the skylight. Yeah, see? That's impossible. Your ludicrous proposal almost has me as a loss for words. However... Shut up. The skylight... <laughs> what if he was just like, shut up? You shut up, I know what I'm saying. I guess objection really is just shut up, but fancy. The skylight may as well be large enough for someone to pass through. The question now is why? So you claim! Would you have a shred of evidence to support your able braided theory? Nope. Not at all. But I can bluff my way through. That's that's the Naruhodo way. Both Mr. McGilded and Miss Lestray said the same in their testimonies. They both claim to have heard a loud thud such as the noise made by someone falling to the floor. Yes, which has already been explained. As the sound of the victim falling from his seat, having been ass assaulted with a dagger. Yes, it has, but... Would a man slipping from the seat onto the floor really have made such a loud noise as the witnesses describe? A loud noise loud enough to cause Miss Lestred to let out an involuntarily cry, in fact. Good, good gracious! Perhaps, in fact, that was the moment that the victim made his entrance into the cabin. No, let me rephrase that. The victim didn't enter the cabin as such. He fell into it! And he was dead there? So that means that someone on the, on the skylight did it. She's just that the victim fell into the skylight into the cabin. Yep. And it was either... It was one It was one of these three. And I don't think it was this guy, because he was driving it. It's one of these guys. I would assume it'd be this guy, because he looks suspicious. See his shifty looking eyes? This guy, though. He's looking at this guy. So, that he's trying to... I don't know. Um, gentleman works at City Banker. He works as a banker. He could have. He could have wanted him dead because he didn't. He didn't have money. But why are these guys like accomplices? Like, that's the next question. I don't know. That's simply impossible. How can you be so sure? Because if the victim had fallen inside through the skylight, as you say, the passengers on the roof deck would have just seen it happen. That hand movement. I like that hand movement, though. That's cool. And yet, not one person made mention of such events in their testimony. Well, uh, yeah, that's true, but... Might a humble fella make a wee comment here? Mr. McGilded? To be sure now, the two fellas who were sat on the roofs that testified for said not another victim fall into the skylight. But it seems to me, my lord, that is not so much a case of them not saying, but... Hi. It is a case of them being unable to say. I think perhaps the two fellas do be having something of a compelling reason to not mention what happened. Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you agree, fine ladies and gentlemen of the jury? <laughs> oh my goodness, surely not. There's two chaps on the roof. <laughs> you mean the ones who stuck the knife in the man were? <laughs> we got him. Who's holding it now? Yeah, you're back. You're back. You're back. For what exactly are you insinuating here, you you b b blither? You rotter, he said. You rotter. What are you insinuating? This is a flaming outrage. I've got a good mind. You a blinker in a minute. He'll give you a, sh a shiner in a minute, he said, and so will I. Mr. Fairplay, you're effectively accusing me, a city gentleman and well-respected banker. And me, a, a very angry, angry, angry hatter. What are you doing? Why are there like horse like hooves? 
suggesting that someone like me could have stabbed that man in the guts. That's... It's a disgrace. It's, it's, uh, I protest. I protest in the strongest possible terms. That's right. I persist too. And you, you rotten scoundrel. Okay, so... Now I don't know who to believe, because he... Because, well... I, I, I don't know anymore. Order! This is not a uh, time, witnesses. I will not permit this once an invasion of the stand. Return to the enter room at once. But this is beyond reason, my lord. It's outrageous. It's very hurtful, you know. My lord, if I may comment. Go ahead, Lord Van Zeeks. It was the defense that in incited this outburst from the witness. My learned friend has seen fit to abandon all protocol and accuse the witnesses without proof. I, 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 accuse? I, I never intended to. It seems, young Nipponies, that your command of the English tongue is wanting. You proposed to this court that the victim fell through the skylight from the roof deck from the army loss. That hypothesis, hypothesis cannot possibly stand without the rooftop passengers being aware of the events. You have branded these gentlemen liars. You have intimidated. The criminal guilt. I in intimate in, intimated. In our British courts of law, this is what has turned a baseless termed a baseless accusation. Math is putting a bunch of emotes in the in the comments. Comments in the chat. I know it was rash to put this idea forward without any actual evidence, but you can't just dismiss it without a second thought. That's, that's expensive. Don't stab that. Whatever. What are we wasting time for? Get them to testify! I thought there was something fishy about that hat from the moment I laid eyes on the fellow. If there's filth and rubbish in our midst, we must dispose of it at once. Whoa. They're actually chanting. What's happening, Mr. Naruto? The spectators in the public gallery are... They're in a complete frenzy. Testify! Mr. Fairway, Mr. First. Uh, um... My lord, I like this animation. I don't know why. There's something really satisfying about them. Just... <gasps> what do we do? You will take the stand again and make another formal testimony. In reference to the... Uh, indictment brought by the defense. I spilled water all over myself. Yes, my lord! I, I didn't come here for this. Ellipsis. There's no time to think this through. All I can do is keep pushing forward until my enemies are destroyed. Witness testimony. We were the only two people on that roof deck, dead or alive, I can swear to that. If anything had happened while we were sitting, I don't think one or the other would have noticed. In any case, neither of us knew the first thing about the victim. We had no reason to kill the man. Oh wait, hang on. Oh wait, no, that's not his. Okay, never mind. I have... <laughs> okay, he's not a dead. Is he though? I don't know. Ah, whatever. I thought I, I thought I had something, but um, we had no reason to kill the man. The skylight was shut the entire time until you couldn't possibly have opened it. Stop doing that. If you're so sure the victim fell through the skylight, where's your proof? You would be McGilded. <laughs> I must say, I'm listening to this testimony, it is somewhat hard to imagine. Yeah. Yeah. How either witnesses could have performed any malevolent act on this rooftop deck. 
Hey, I, 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 no. We need this guy back. Wait, no, not we need this guy back in. He would have known. If if this dude was on the bus, this dude would be able to tell us, right? If he was on the roof, Dad couldn't he just come out and say, yeah, he was on the roof? I, that's all I want to know. Oh wait, hang on, no. I guess uh, we no. Okay, well, no. We assume he was on the roof because he wouldn't. Whatever, man. I don't know. Uh, any man level at the top of the roof dock w uh, without the other noticing. Fourth, but yeah, I know. That's right. You see. When did I tell you? Although logically, of course, the argument falls down if the two of you were in collision with one another. What? <laughs> According to an investigation by Scotland Yard, the two witnesses share no common dealings. <laughs> we don't trust coppers any more than I trust the stinking rich. Something doesn't feel right here. The trial is going in our favor, really. So why do we feel so uneasy? Counsel for the defense, over to you. Your cross-examination, please. Oh, I thought he said peasant. I was like, what the... Are you... You can't... What? Your cross-examination, peasant. Cross-examination. We were the only two people on that roof deck, dead or alive, I can swear to that. Hold it! So in my time, did the victim, Mr. Mason, climb up and join you on the roof deck? Absolutely not. Dickin! Keep going. No question about it, he said. None at all. Thank you. Oh, but yes, of course. I remember seeing them both. Okay. I saw the victim inside the enclosed cabin talking with this man over here. Is this true, Mr. McGilded? Do you mean, my lord, at the risk of repeating myself, I boarded the omnibus alone and nodded off inside almost immediately. It's an effort lie, without doubt you were engaged in. Let me stop you there, fella, and ask, do you have any evidence at all? At all? Ah. This is about evidence in the courts these days, so it is. You'd do well to remember that. Ellipsis. I saw you with my own eyes! <laughs> this is going so well. It truly is. Um, if anything had happened while we were sitting, don't you think one or the other would have noticed? Hold it! Well, it wasn't the final run of the only bus past 10 o'clock in the evening. It would certainly have been quite dark. Perhaps too dark to see clearly. It is some kind of lock. This is some kind of joke he said. Is this what it is? Or perhaps one of the other, uh, one of the other of you fell asleep briefly. Oh, you fair dinkum, sir. Are you serious, sir? That's what he said. It's impossible, I tell you. I'd give you the keys to my vault if you could fall asleep in that bit of cold. And if you did manage, your eyelids would freeze shut and you'd never open them again. That's extreme. It was extreme, I tell you. We put it up with him because of this man locked the door. Any true gen would have unlocked and let me in. Whoa. That's, that's new. He locked the door? I'm dreadfully sorry about that, young fella. But, you see, I was awfully... I was away with the fairies, and I... I, I, I didn't hear you at all. That's a lie, so you through the glass you were talking to someone. No, no, it was a cold night, so it was. People do be seeing things that aren't real in the cold. It is hardly surprising. Seeing things, seeing things! I can't believe we had reached an impasse here on this particular point. You, you, you! Don't take it personally, Lao Lad. If I'm a suspect in this case, and it's only fair that you and the other fiend are too. Open and free competition is what capitalist society is all about. This isn't a competition we would be involved in, really. I should like to be. That's what I meant to say. In any case, neither of us knew the first thing about the victim and no reason to kill. Wait, 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 w
Hatters don't have much to do with brick makers, to be perfectly honest, sir. Okay. No, I imagine not. You see, how many different ways can I put this? Neither of us have the remote connection to the... No. <laughs> He's laughing. He knows something. Neither of us have the most connection to the gentlemen who were inside the cabin. Excuse me. Wait, oh yeah, he's right. Wait, no. Well, is counsel? Why is autoplay on? How do I turn? Is counsel? What can I do you for? The witness in the la Oh, there we go. Okay. Did the witness's last statement give you any pause for thought somehow? Not the remorse connection. Is that right now, I wonder? <laughs> the cheeky Irishman. What are you insinuating now? Ah, Mr. Fairplay, it's been too long, so it has. Yeah. If I'm not very much mistaken, I believe tis fast approaching, is it not? Your repayment date. I I knew I should have looked at that earlier. Well, I mean, it was it was used earlier, but still, they are connected. Therefore, oh, that 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 puts a lot on him, because Fairplay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. He could have killed him, dropped him in, right? And tried to get him arrested so he wouldn't need to re repay the date back. I think that was said earlier in the case, but that seems very true right now, specifically. I beg your pardon? Hey, you borrowed 20 guineas from me, sir. At, the, at an unreasonable rate of interest, you tricked me It's extortion. Well, now, is that a touch of big grudery, is it? The sort of begouldery that might motivate a fellow to pass his crimes off to another. <laughs> That's a perfect point. He's got a massive point there. And Mr. First, young Mr. First. Me, sir. What do you want with me, sir? You do be making hats for a living, do you not? That there top hat is sliding off your head. Is that one your own creation, is it? Oh, well, I, I'm just an apprentice, you understand. I'm learning to find the perfect fit for whatever fine gent walks through the door. The perfect fit, is it? Well, it's a very distinctive design, so it is. Many customers like it. <laughs> what the what was that? I just made a weird sound with my voice. They like a distinctive touch. Customers, such as Thrice Fried Mason. Oh. There's a photographic print of the victim submitted as evidence before, my lad. Lord, my, my lad. Yep. That's a pretty bad looking hat. I mean,. You know, I'm not bad, I'm just saying. Oh, well, uh, this you mean? Yeah. It's a nice hat. I can't help, I can't help thinking the poor fella's hat looks distinctly familiar, wouldn't you say? Uh, oh! That's, uh, that's one of my hats! <laughs> Aye, that is. So it would seem the brickmaker was a customer of yours. Everyone's connected. The sort of customer I'd wager you could have had a wee quarrel with over a distinctiveness of the goods. No, sir, absolutely not, sir. Well, there's really nothing more to add. It wouldn't be right to say that the two fellas here haven't the remotest connection with the victim. That's a good point. But we need we just need to prove that they did it. I address my case. You little weasel! Ugh. He's better at this than I am. Gosh, Mr. McGilded has certainly been thorough in his research, hasn't he? Yeah. Please don't let a little interruption hold the proceedings. I just got an achievement called Hat Hunter. <laughs> the the skull that was shut the entire time, I tell you. No one could have possibly opened it. Okay. Hold it! Where's your proof to that? Are you quite certain about that? The skull was shut the entire time. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to lose my block with your you in a minute. He's going to lose his rag with you in a minute. That's what he said. Take a look for yourself. Go on. You see, it's shut fast now, just like it was on the night. So it is, of course. A fella the size of Mr. Mason could likely break through it. Still no. What? Just looking at the size of the thing, you'd understand. Now you hold on a minute there, sir. The size of the thing means nothing. Not in its own. Let's consider the bigger picture here, shall we? Let's stop biting our cane, shall we? Um, 
I was riding the omnibus to another occasion when, um, well, I broke wind loudly. I shocked myself with. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Excuse me? This is an unexpected confession, Mr. First. Oh, I, I just mean to say, well, the point is I tried to open the skylight, you see. What? 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 Wait, wait, hang on. Wait, what does. But just as my luck, I couldn't make it budge. The stench was terrible. Wait, what? 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 Did, wait, no, wait, no, that doesn't make any sense. Why? What? No, 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 no. Can I? What? I'm, that doesn't make sense. What? Can I? Can, well, I just autoed. What? Everyone was looking, looking daggers at me, sir. I went as red as a rouge. I did. Why would you? Are you expecting me to sentence you? Oh no, sir. The the point is. The skylight can't be open. I tried and tried when I was inside the cabin of shame. Okay, wait, hang on. No, wait, no, wait, no, 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 no. You have something to say about this, but like, give me, give me a minute here. What? I was, I was, I was riding the omnibus on an. Oh wait. Oh okay. Another. Okay. okay I, I, I thought. I got really confused for a second. I thought it's like I tried to open the window so no one could smell it. Like no, but you were on the roof. Excuse me. All right, I know now. Do you have something to say about that, Miss Lestrade? Miss Lestrade? It opens. Hmm. The skylight. That's what we're talking about, right? All of them open, it's dead easy. More easily than you can load that weapon? Just a lie, I tell you. Otherwise, when I broke wind, I... Uh, you can't do it from inside, you mug. Oh. Look, a few... Wait, what? Okay, no, that's just weird design. I'm gonna be honest. That's just weird design. Why would you only be able to open it from the outside? There's, there's like no reason. <laughs> Whatever. A few weeks ago, I was on the deck of one of them drags, and I had a great haul. I mean, I had purses coming out of my ears. <laughs> Miss Lestrade, this is not the form to be elongating on the subject of your criminal activities. Well, anyway, I had a bit of a scare. When I lifted the last bloke's purse, he got he got ways of me. And all the four of surrounded me, so I couldn't dop the bus on the legget. So what I did was I used a skylight, hoping to catch and jump right through. What? Yeah. The catch for them skylights is on the top side. That's, that's why you can't open them from the cabin. The skylight opens from the roof deck. Bailiff, climb up to the roof of the omnibus at once and verify this witness's claims. The answer I saw earlier. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, my hat! See? Order, order, order! Though it appears the street girl's uh, statement is quite true. I don't believe it. The skylight opens. And from the roof deck. Mr. Naruto! This could be the clue we've been looking for! Could be, but we don't. We can't. We, we don't have any evidence saying that they did do it. That's the thing. Counsel for the defense, please continue with the cross examination. Yes, my lord. So, the skylight opens. Perhaps I should investigate for myself. Sure thing. Alright. Where's your proof? Well. Give me one second. As I look for it. What the? Whoa, what the? Heck? Whoa. Open this up, put it in the court record. So the skylight was fashion shot before, but now the catch has been undone. We should be able to open it. Good, 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 good. You can certainly see the inside of the carriage for this opening for sure, and that's the enclosed cabin, so I'm sure the witness will be able to see That's not good for us. Okay, so that's just open, so I guess that's fine. So now that we have it open... Okay, so now we can probably use that to, um... Use that. Uh... Where's your proof? I don't really have proof. Skull was shut the entire time, I tell you. Uh, we couldn't possibly have opened it. Now... I don't know if I need to... 
We couldn't possibly have opened it. I don't... I don't know if I can do that there, because... Like... That's a clear contradiction, but we just figured that out, right? So like, I don't know if I need to do that now. And then there's this guy. Where's your proof? Can I hold him? Like, I don't know. I'll press him. Proof. That's right, I'm about to hear it. We can see what we saw. I tell you not for this. Would you call us both sh uh, shy a brand of such criminals? You call us lies, that's what it means. You accuse us of doing it. As it stands at the moment. There's no hard evidence that incriminates yourselves, now is there? I believe we're in much the same position as what- I like this guy, can he be like my assistant? My second assistant? Cause, well... Hmm? Yeah, you- If I don't crack this case soon, he'll crack his teeth. Probably. Hmm, I wonder if these two men really were involved in this some way. I couldn't say. I mean, I don't really know anything about them, do I? Although, by the same token, I don't really know anything about Mr. McGilded either. It's so hard to know what to believe here. I think we should try to remember that it's evidence alone that can truly determine the outcome of a trial. Evidence. No one can argue against de decisive evidence, including the members of the jury. So you're saying that what we need now is to find a conclusive piece of evidence. Yeah, so I don't know where to press it. We don't have proof saying you could have done it. We do have proof that... Objection. Yeah, it's just stupid! It's stupid! I'm reloading. No, let's not. I'm reloading. I'm reloading because that's stupid. I'm reloading because it's stupid. Because that's a contradiction. The roof can open, but it's stupid. Or am I supposed to look... Okay. Here's the thing. Because we open that. I'm gonna go... I'm gonna step inside. I'm gonna look through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why do I get so mad whenever I get something wrong? <laughs> okay. Can't find anything out of the- uh, What do you mean? You see a ceiling. Okay. Oh ho 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 what is wrong with you? <laughs> Someone like me? Ah! Uh, what is it? Look just out here, look at this! That's without question. It's blood. Why'd there be a blood stain there? Surely, it can't be unrelated to the case, can it? <laughs> there we go. That's what it was. Okay. All right. We got it now. We got it now. All right. That's what we needed. We got it. Where's your proof? Objection. See, I'm a little. I know what I'm talking about. I'm just a little slow. On the landing question, the victim was fatally stabbed in the stomach, and immediately afterwards, the victim's body was pushed through the skylight onto the cabin below. Those are the facts, and the irrefutable proof. I mean, certainly visible in the omnibus that stands before us today in this very courtroom. What? That's... that's not a humbug! You can't possibly have any, 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 any evidence! Now, here's my question. Is this going to go on for a third stage? Because usually they go on for three, but this seems like it's ending soon, so I don't know. You can't... I, I mean, we didn't do what I tell you. It's impossible. Irrefutable proof here in this courtroom. Counsel, my lord. I believe everyone would appreciate a little clarification here, hmm? Okay. We're exactly within the omnibus of the evidence of, uh, yeah, it's inside. It's inside, it's on the roof, it's up here, point out what it has, prove the victim fell up to the roof, yeah, through the skylight. And now, you would think I'd do something like, the floor on the floor. No. Where'd it go? What? Where'd it go? What? Excuse me? There's no blood. What? Where'd the blood go? What? Oh, wait. <laughs> ah. I'm an idiot. Do I really think it'll be ending soon? I, honestly, I don't know. I, it's hard to say. Like, honestly, it's, um, I don't think so. But the way it's going, it looks like it. But I don't think it will. I'll probably finish today in this stream. Wide enough to kick someone like you through, certainly. Oh, wait, I didn't press it. I didn't press. I, I, I'm, I'm supposed to press. My bad. I'm supposed to press. Yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to press it. I, yeah, I'm not supposed to examine it because I already did that. Got it! Got it! 
By Jupiter, is that... Is that blood? <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I know. That may... No, it's, it's quirky. It's quirky. People like quirky, right? This bloodstain proves two things. Firstly, when the incident occurred, the skylight of the omnibus was open. Okay, I promise. Next case, the next case, I'm going to get everything right 100% of the time. I'm not going to lose one point. And I'm going to do it perfectly well. The skylight of the omnibus was open. What? And secondly, the victim was already bleeding when he fell through the opening. Oh my! And so it follows that Mr. McGilded, who was inside the enclosed cabin himself at the time, cannot possibly be guilty of his crime! Yeah, scream all you want. You can't escape the law. Now, if the jury doesn't move these things right now, I'm gonna scream, and I'm gonna leave. Hold it! Also, he has a hold it. He did it. If they have a hold it, if the, I'm, I'm telling you, if they have a hold it, they're 100% guilty. It was the same with the last case, or, the, or no, the case before. Sorry. But 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 but, but the blood had sprayed up. Are you kidding me? What kind of? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let. Yeah. The blood could have sprayed when the fellow was stabbed. Yeah. 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 You know what? I think you're right. And only found that way to one particular spot in the skylight. Sure. That would be very convenient. Oh. And let's keep in mind that the skylight catch can only be unfastened from the roof deck. I myself wouldn't have been able to open it now, would I? Yeah, here's the thing though. The thing is, you did lock the doors, so that's pretty messed up. But, 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 there's no way for certain that is there? The gent really fell through the skylight, I mean? Oh, why don't you have a good look at the floor of the cabin between the two seats, Mr. First? It is all too plain, if you see. The aftermath that shows the poor fella dropped from a fair height right there, so it is. What? Uh, no. But it can't be. It's. It's all. Lies! Hold it. My fellow dirty members. I think we can all agree that this is the clear proof of the defendant's innocence, can we? I can agree. It's the where the filthy rubbish can be found. In. Here's what's gonna happen, though. Uh, Zeke's hasn't said anything. Like, Zeke's hasn't said anything at all. And the only time we know we're on a good streak is when the prosecutor's like, What but how? And he didn't say, What but how? He hasn't said anything. He's probably drinking right now. He doesn't care. He knows something's up. He's gonna say something stupid, and we're gonna be like, Oh, and then they're gonna be like, Oh, that's true. So they thought they could pull the wool over my eyes, did they? I won't tolerate any of the girls. The guy, the guild's carriage is being sullied with blood. I won't tolerate it. Oh, I always knew that nice gentleman who gave us that delightful park couldn't have done such a thing. Objection! Here it comes. Three. Objection! Objection! See, told you. A chilling performance, Mr. McGilded. Oh, and what would you be referring to there now, Lord Van Zeeks? A blood stain on the frame of the skylight. Such evidence is null and void. Now he's gonna say something like, Why was there no blood on the roof? What? Why? For one extremely simple reason. That smear of blood never existed. Oh, shoot. Proof. <laughs> Give me proof. His objection is so not powerful. Objection! But Zeke's is like, OBJECTION! You know what I mean? He's, he's gotta work on that one. But what are you talking about? It's there for all to see. It's clearly blood. OBJECTION! I personally attended Scotland's yard investigation of the Omnibus. The officers involved went over to the carriage with a fine tooth comb. So I can state with absolute uh, surety. surety. No such smear of blood existed in the carriage. At least, not until this trial began. But, are you suggesting, Lord Van Zeeck, that the stain of blood was... Fabricated, my lord? Yes, and while this court has been in session... By her, was it? Oh, no! So was it her? Now everything's going... Ah, I don't know. 
Uh, what are we gonna do, Mr. Smarty Pants? I'm gonna try to get the blame off my defendant. I don't care if it was her. It could have been her, but like, honestly, I don't want it to be her because I kind of like her. But the thing is, he's a defendant. You didn't. You didn't pay anything. We're gonna get a nice bit of money from you, so you better be right. I must say, I didn't expect a crude reasoning from a prosecutor of your standing, Lord Van Zeeks. Why do I like her? You got a point. I don't know why I do. That's actually a really good point. Why do I like her? There's no... There's like no... She has like no redeeming qualities. She's a pickpocket. She's a thief. Alright, you know what? Screw her. It's her. It's her. Put the blame on her. I don't care. <laughs> Feeling a little too lonely. No, that's not... No. <laughs> but a Magnus McGill is a fellow known all over the capital for his fine contribution to the public life. I don't take kindly to slander, nor fight it to the bitter end. Even if it's rolling off the tongue of the Reaper or the Bailey. Darn it, but then if she made that distraction in order to put the blood there, then the thing is, she could have just been doing that to get, like, like, oh, yeah, because you saved my life, so, like, <sighs> I realize this is their first appearance in a courtroom as the accused. However, I am well aware of your involvement behind the scenes in a great many affairs of a dubious nature. You are very well adept when it comes to avoiding getting your own hands dirty. And each time it happens that that's the case you're involved in is investigated, you adapt the facts. Adapt the facts? What does that even mean? It means I'm hungry. Cheese would go well with this. When you wield a fortune of a size, Mr. McGill did, however, however ill-gotten it may be, nothing is impossible. Timing with evidence, manipulating the scene of a crime, bribing with witnesses. I toast your abilities to con uh, concoct the most convenient of stories, sir. Tut tut, Lord Van Zeex, this would not do, to be sure. It's now- <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. What the- that was out of nowhere. Will it now, Counsel? Hmm? Oh no! I think it's fair to say this does all sound like a rather far-fetched excuse by a desperate man. The blood on the skylight didn't exist, you say? Yeah, why do why do the prosecutors always get away with it? But we never do. We never get away with it. It's so stupid. This is stupid. But if you all act if your minds back, it's not true that the omnibus that there has been in the courtroom the entire day. How could anyone possibly smear blood in the, without a word and his wife seeing? The world and his wife seeing. Isn't that right now, counsel? No. Ah, shoot. I, it's true. The Omnibus has been in full view the entire- No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. It hasn't. My learned friend. You know it's not true. Here's to hearing your opinion on this matter. In your own words. I've got to be honest about it. I can't lie. Because if I lie, it'll only look like I'm being desperate. Could someone have ten- yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, they could have. I think it could have been possible, but I can't lie. We're trying to find justice here. It's not justice if we lie. As a defense lawyer, it's my job to advocate for the defendant as best I can. But still, I feel as though there's something more important at stake here. There's no evidence to suggest that the defendant did as my learned friend suggested. However, in terms of having the opportunity to carry out the alleged alleged tampering, there is one possibility. Explain yourself, counsel. I've got to do it. Yes, there is. It seems my learned Nipponese friend has no intention of running from his from this deceit. Deceit? I'm sure everyone remembers clearly. The recess that was for we were forced to take. Here's another thing, though. Here's another thing that I can counter-argument. Um, this blood would be dried. This would be dried blood in there. So, you wouldn't be able to take the blood and put it there. Because that, that's impossible, because it's dried blood. That's my counter-argument. The reasons that we were forced to take as a result of the smoke grenade filled by the witnesses, the witness currently at its end. Yeah, there we go. It's true. Bang. I could have happened, but still. Captain Mr. Nahodo, bear left, don't let the accused escape. Secure the omnibus. Yeah, emergency recess. But the thing is, though, 
like... Yeah, that's my counter argument. My counter argument. Come on. Unless you have another blood, and then if there is more blood, do a blood test. That's that's all you gotta do. Just do a do a test and see whose blood it really is. Oliver's made to leave this chamber. In that brief inter um, interval, under a veil of smoke and all the chaos, it could have been possible to steal the inside of the. Hey, a blood test in this day and age. Yeah. Let me do a Google search really quick. Let me do a Google search. Naruto, just chill for a little bit. When was the first blood test done? Uh, Robin Combs, a British British immunologist who in the 1940s invented a blood test that bears his name and a version which is used to diagnose some kind of a... Who discovered blood tests? Uh, shoot. What if, what if I was just like, what about a blood test? They'll be used in the future. Are you wise? What are you trying to pull, you, you rotten feckless gouger? Fe feckless gouger? You're supposed to be defending me. It is a wicked plot. It is a plot to undermine me, so it is. There's a weird phone. I don't know what that phone is. I've never answered that phone. I never will. Whatever you think it is, it changes nothing. The facts are the same. After this courtroom was ev evacuated earlier as a result of the smoke grenade, a number of inconsistencies materialize in relation to the omnibus. Inconsistencies such as... To start with, the storage compartment underneath the rear passenger seat. Did he really do it? No, he couldn't have. I, I doubt so much. When the police investigated the omnibus, this compartment was full of the driver's items. Secondly, we have the smear of blood on the edge of the skylight. As I have said, that was not present at the start of the trial this morning. Hmm. Unfortunately, Lord Van Zeeks, no one is able to corroborate your claims. Yeah, that's true. When the omnibus was first wheeled out, both the storage compartment and the skylight were shut. Accordingly, I'm afraid to say, we cannot establish with any certainty if this evidence is the result of tampering or not. Indeed, my lord, no doubt there was not a single person who saw it fit to, such a, to verify such things. What do you think? Sorry. About the omnibus. Is there anything else unusual about the omnibus? Um... Probably. My lord. Yes, counsel? There's one further inconsistency. A mark that surely could not have been present at the start of the trial. What? What in devil nail are you trying to say now? If you dare betray me, you little maggots, then you'd best be watching your back. <laughs> I don't know what I'm even doing anymore. Silence, my gilded. The court awaits the defense's clarification. Yeah. Trial keeps swinging one way and then the other. I have no idea what's the truth and what's deception. What am I supposed to be? Be what am I supposed to believe here? I shall now. I, I shall have you ask you to elaborate. I don't know. Uh, alleged mark you claim to appear during the trial. Um. Can I open? Let me open. It seems... Huh? What, what about it? What about it? What? What about it? What, what about it? Whoa, 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 whoa. The seed handle. It seems... It seems what? What does it seem like? That's blood, isn't it? Is something wrong? It's just, well, this blood stain is so obvious, that's all. And yet Van Zeeks has made no mention of it. Well, this does seem a little strange. What do I do? Why do I have such a bad feeling about this? I don't know. I don't know at all. There's no... Wait. Oh, shoot. Oh, my God. It is fake blood. 
It is fake blood. It is because this is dried and oh my. Oh. It is fake. Oh, you gotta go eat. All right, have, have a good eat. Yeah. Darn it. Got it. Darn. We said the victim fell through the skylight onto the floor in the cabin. Would you certainly expect to find signs of blood where he landed? But as far as I recall, this blood stain on the cabin floor was not there when the omnibus was first brought into the courtroom. It's a different color. Oh my god, it was there. I do believe you're correct, counsel. Well said. Although, as advocate for the defense, one might say that it was a very careless slip of the tongue. I believe that blood stain on the floor is decisive is a decisive piece of evidence. But if the question is whether that evidence is genuine or whether it was unlawfully fabricated by someone, I feel compelled to admit that there is at least a possibility that the evidence is fake. Uh oh. I So was it her? I think it has to have been her, right? She did it. She's the victim er, not the victim, she's the culprit. Arg. Oh my god, is... This trial is over. So he did it? Mr. McGill did? I've done everything I possibly could to collaborate with the court, but it is all over now. But, but you're the defendant. It is over, I tell ya. What? Memory, recollection, what people think they saw. It is all a nonsense. Facts are what counts, and the fact is that Bloodstain is there now. Uh, well... And over the course of this desperate trial, long and extremely drawn out as it's been, that good for nothing Reaper de Bailey has failed to present any decisive evidence at all. I'm scandalized, so I am, so I thought it better I thought better of Lord Van Zeeks. Well, my lord Oh man, I don't know what's going on anymore. I must concur with the defendant. The unaffirmed recollections of an individual cannot stand as evidence. At this moment in time, no particular blood stain, and the question is very much in existence. And the absence of any credible method in which to provide its, provide its alleged previous non-existence. I regret to say that it would be improper for this trial to continue. Your lordship can't be serious. Lord Van Zeeks, what, what is your position? The prosecution, my lord, has no further witness or evidence to present. Very well. In that case... I believe we have explored every possible avenue of this matter. I shall proceed to my adjudication. Adjudication. As a formality, I am, of course, obligated to confirm with the defense first. What formality? As things stand at the moment, it would seem that Mr. McGillard will be found not guilty. Yeah. Which would mean we've won. Is that the really? Is that the right outcome here? Is it really all right for the trial to come to an end now with all these unexplained inconsistencies? Counsel for the defense, your closing statement, please. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Yes, my lord. The defense believes... No. Oh my... I don't know. <laughs> I just unplugged. Did I just unplug my controller? No, I didn't. Did I? No, I didn't. Okay. Was it her? I I don't know, man. I don't know. Um. The way he's acting, he honestly could be guilty. But, like, he could be guilty. I don't know. He could be. I'm not saying he is. He could be. I'm here in this courtroom today to advocate for the defense of my client, Mr. McGilded. However, at this moment in time, I cannot allow all good conscience attest fully to the defendant's innocence. What are you saying, man? Without any question, there is no conclusive evidence to prove that the defendant is guilty. However, there is also no conclusive evidence to prove that he is innocent. Good, good gracious me. 
Well, this is this is unprecedented behavior, Counsel. A defense lawyer calling the accused innocence into question? Are you are you sound mind? <laughs> oh, it was a grand decision to appoint you as my lawyer, so it was a grand decision. What? I must say, I didn't expect quite such an exciting spectacle to end there, but... Here, I, every single time he does that, it freaks me out. Have this for your troubles. Huh? Your job here is done, fella. And some fine work you've done, so you have. Uh, what do you mean? Tis just the right honorable gentleman as such, such intensely put it over for. The trial can't go on any longer. And your closing statement there was... How did you put it now? Nothing more than a formality. <laughs> I really don't know what to make of all of this. What's the evidence we've seen genuine, or was it fake? His lordship would be fuming. Any inside the approach would be disposed of promptly, as I said. I'm so confused. I'm sticking to the Richard I was guilty of something. Yeah, oh, my great words! I feel terribly ashamed that I ever doubted that lovely man who gave us a lovely part. <sighs> now the proceedings have unfolded in this way. I'm compelled to declare a premature end to this trial. Furthermore, the court must accept the defendant's plea. I thank you kindly, my lord. I hereby pronounce the verdict of this court. Objection. But, but we still haven't determined if the blood stain in the omnibus is genuine or not. We don't know if these witnesses are telling the truth or, or a pack of lies. We have no idea about the truth. Lord Van Zeeks, my lord. The case made by the prosecution was flawed, plain and simple. If indeed the omnibus presented as evidence was tampered with, the prosecution is at fault for allowing such a disgraceful preservation of justice to take place. My sincerest apologies, my Protection. lord. But wait! When we when we were evacuated from the courtroom, Lord Van Zeeks ordered the evidence to be secured. I'm afraid the prosecution cannot shun responsibility in this matter. That's so unfair. The capability of the defendant has not, at the present time, been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to prof to proffer judgment. What? Well, Lord Van Zeeks, it's been a pleasure, so it has. As for you, my dear fella, I couldn't have asked for a better defense. I'm so... confused. <laughs> Do you mean this has been a waste of time? Tis the law of the land, my good man. If you'd like to pursue this matter further, you can always go ahead and try challenge, try to change the law. Magnus McGilded. Good grief, you have more to say to me, have ya? Just one thing, a warning. This is far from over. Well, something to be looking forward to then. I hereby pronounce the defendant, Mr. McGillis, be gilded. Not guilty. This is the... This is the... My mic was just off for like, I don't even know how long, but the, the this is the worst victory. It's not over yet though.
I don't know what just happened. My Streamlabs is always messing up. I don't know why. I'm so angry that it keeps happening. I don't know how long it was off for. I have no idea. But I didn't even do anything. It just broke. Whatever. I j basically, all I said was, this is the most hollow victory I've ever experienced in any game. Actually, not really. That's not true. But still, it's it's up there. <sighs> Alright. I, I don't know where this is going to go. That certainly was a long trial. Uh, yeah, it was. Your first ever trial on foreign soil and your first victory. It was a wonderful performance. My heartfelt congratulations. And to you, Mr. Sato. Thank you for your assistance. I suppose we should be happy. The trouble is, we're still completely in the dark about what actually happened. Well, we didn't have enough time. But isn't it wrong? I mean, who is actually responsible for Mr. Mason's death? We don't even know that. The sole aim of the defense is to obtain a verdict that ex er, exonerates the defendant. You carried out your duty to perform. Hey, that you did! Mr. McGill did. Ah, the girl's with him too. Well, it seems the stories are true. Oh, uh, what stories? Oh, but the six enormous fireworks they do be letting off when there's a verdict of not guilty. I'm sure you must have seen them now. Spectacular, wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. I heard it was a sight to behold, and to be sure it was. And I've got you to tank, I suppose, for having an opportunity to see it. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I don't know about that. I'm not sure I really did anything. What on earth are you saying, fella? How did I walk out of here a free man, then? I don't think it was so much as a thanks to me as down to your planning. You're a straight, you're you're a stray talking fella, aren't you? I must say you had me astray in the head there once or twice. But you're young and hard, strong. <laughs> it's just water under the bridge. Congratulations, Mr. McGilded, on having your name cleared. But nothing's resolved. There's only one thing that matters to me. Oh? I... They've all seen that I didn't have... That I did... What? They've all seen that I didn't do that odious and option indeed. It is grand, is it not? I suppose it is. Now, the fine fellas of Scotland Yard can make matters in the hand of the sword and the wee details. They'll see it for what it is. They'll get to the truth. I have absolute faith in them, so I have after all. I do be providing a good number of wages with all the taxes I pay. Ha <laughs> It's not that funny. So then. As we agree beforehand, 1,000 guineas for your troubles, fella. Oh, uh, no, no, I couldn't have possibly accept that, accept that much. I'd rather be waste. Be, be waste. You're a humble people, are you, from the East? Well, if you insist. But have this still and all, you deserve a reward. Mr. Magmagnus McGilded. Everything is right, sir, if you'd like to follow me into the courtroom. Into the courtroom? What's this, officer? It's sooner than I was led to believe. I hope it's not inconvenient, sir. There were some changes to the schedule. Well, I must be making tracks now. It is time for the inspection. Sorry, what inspection? They're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. As if I could be present for it myself. They're going to examine it again? Now? Naturally, I'm under no obligation to take part in any more of this matter now. But as an upstanding member of London Society, I do be doing my best to see where I can. Help, just help where I can. This is gentleman's duty, so it is. So then, fare thee well. It was an absolute pleasure meeting you. Hope you have a whale of time you know, staying, studying here in Great Britain. Ugh. And there he goes. A free man. Oh, I forgot she was here too. Don't move. Whereas I want to say, uh, whereas I want to say, get a move on. She really does take forever to load that thing. Miss Lestrade, would you mind putting that thing down? You're a grown up. Sorry? And I ate all grown ups. 
Oh, there you are. Who are you? You're an important character. Naughty, naughty, running off like that. Is this some kind of picnic? Who's this little girl now? And you're taking that with you as well? I was looking forward to a little run of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Ah! Whoa. Oh, do you want to play? You won't beat me. Yeah, I, um, excuse me, but who are you? Oh, good day to you. I'm, well, I'm the inventor, I suppose, of that machine. The inventor? Well, normal smoke grenades are so dull, wouldn't you agree? White, white, and more right. What, white, why? Well, yeah, we have big shoulders and smoke. You could at least be a pretty color, I thought to myself. Do we have to be shrouded in smoke, though, at all? I just took my eyes off for a moment whilst I was changing into a, di a different omnibus and she pinched it! Luckily I fitted it with a telegraphic beacon! A tele what's it? Nah. I have no uh, I have no idea what this girl's talking about. Anyway, you come with me now, back to my laboratory. What what for? To apologize, of course, City, to my tactician! What you mean say sorry? You, you must say sorry for what you've done something wrong, surely your doctor has told you that before. An adult? Hmm, I don't listen to no adults. Come along then, follow me. Fine, have it your way. Oh, good, you see. I knew you'd do the right thing in the end. Fairly sure that's what she wants to do is not get shot by that massive gun of yours. Well, I'll be leaving now then. Bye bye. So sorry for all the fuss. She was a lively one. Well, uh, I think we'd ought to be on our way now, too. Yeah, you're right. But, where to? Oh! We haven't had time to find a place to stay. No sooner had we arrived in London than we had to rush here. Uh, all our traveling cases are still with the bailiff. Hmm. I was originally planning to spend my day in search of lodgings. But at this late hour in the day, I'm afraid we may be out of luck. Don't worry, though. I have a plan. If the worst comes to the worst, I'll head off to a lovely park where we could spend the night. Please tell me you're not thinking of McGilded Park. I know it may be a little chilly at this time of year, but our usefulness will see us through. I'm not so sure about that. I think a midweather London, I think a midwinter London night will freeze a young person solid just as easy as an elder one. Oh dear, that doesn't sound agreeable. Now I'm starting to regret our turning, regret turning to Mr. McGilded down. That 1,000 guineas would have paid for a lovely warm room or mansion. And so, the trial to determine my worth, my worthiness for the study tour was over by the end of our first day in London. However, as we were soon to learn, there was more trying times ahead. Just as the Reaper of the Bailey had warned, the case was far from over. It's not done yet. What's going on? Get the fire brigade! Water! Bring water! Quick! What the? How did this happen? Oh my god. I don't know, sir. By the time I got here, it was already engulfed. No one was supposed to be allowed in here before we started investigating. <gasps> no. Oh, good god. There's... There's someone in there! Oh. Oh. This, this can't be. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it, this was the end. What? Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't I didn't expect that. Whoa.